Okay, so um, let's get started. What, um, what I've really spent a lot of time working on, and, and this relates to uh, sort of how to develop your chordal vocabulary, um, what I found a lot is, is that um, I felt a need to, to uh, felt a need to find a way to develop a, a broader sense of how to how to express harmony on the guitar. Meaning, like, how can I play through the same harmony several times, but but find different things within it, or make it sound, give it a different feel every time, or or give it a different feel depending on the context. You know, if if I'm playing if I'm playing uh, satin doll, I might want my chords to have a certain kind of sound that's different if I'm playing, uh, you know, somebody's original music that, that's not functional harmony. And, um, and also to try and, and really be more sort of uh, pianistic in, in how you approach the harmony, meaning like, uh, you know, almost trying to think of each voice as, as, as having the freedom of moving around or, or, or being in different places within the chord. Um, so basically, what I, what I found is that I, I really wanted to get away from the sound of, of these chords where, um, you know, everything's kind of built in thirds and, and uh, Sometimes that, that sound to me is, is a little too specific or it's a little, it can, it can sort of uh, be a little obvious or, or also I think in terms of accompanying someone, it can sort of box people in a bit because it's, it's such a recognizable sound and it's so familiar and once you play it, it's, it's kind of really, um, you know, really defining the harmony to the point where it, it can be a little uh, a little much sometimes, or it's not always the appropriate um, sound, maybe. Um, and and what I found also is that the, the sort of the way that we're taught how to build chords uh, is not necessarily always the best um, for me. The, the the best or the only option. And what I mean by that is is usually uh, in in uh, the way we're taught to build a chord in guitar is is that. You know, you're probably gonna put your root in there. You know, you don't have to, but most of the time you're gonna do it anyway. Once you have that, then you have your third and your seventh. That sort of defines the sound that you have. Uh, and then, you know, after that, you can sort of add something, something nice if you want, like at nine or you know, sharp eleven, you know, something like that. But that's sort of the hierarchy of of what's going on. You have that, you know, the the, the the third and the seventh, and then after that, on top, you can you can start adding some some colors if you like. Um, and um, and what ends up happening is that, it, to my ears, it gets a, a little tiring hearing the harmony always in that same um, in that same order, where it's like the bottom of the chord is is literally <laughs> the bottom of the chord, and and everything on top is always going to be attention and. And if you think about your top notes as, as melodies, you know, what ends up happening is that, um, you know, they're all going to be tensions. They're all going to be nines or elevens or, you know, and, and to my ears, that, that gets a little tiring because those tensions aren't always the strongest melody notes, for one thing. Um, so so it, it can sort of get in the way of, 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 your, uh, of your voice leading being really strong. And also, like I said, it, it gets this has that sound of like just stacking thirds, which which I, I, I I've been trying to get away from or, or add to. Um, so a couple of ways of doing this. Uh, the first way is really uh, it's not very um, in any way very methodical, but but it works. 